Good afternoon, live from Toronto on the GBKM Network. This is the Chat Up Show, the show where we catch you up with the chat up of our weekly headlines. I'm your host, Elizabeth Aloydi, and I hope that you are ready to chat it up with me today. Now, as always, you know you can keep up with the GBKM Network in various ways. You can listen and watch live 24-7 at www.gbkm.tv or www.gbkm.fm, where you can also catch up on any past shows you have missed, check out our upcoming show schedule, check out our breaking news tab, learn a little bit more about our on-air personalities and hosts of the shows on the GBKM Network, and you can like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. You can also download our free GBKM app that is available for all iOS and Android devices right now. So go ahead and download it. It's completely free, so don't worry. And the best thing is you get all the features available on our web station and you get notified every time we go live. So no worries about missing shows because every single time GBKM goes live, like right now, you get a notification and you won't miss any shows. But if you do, don't worry, there is the past shows tab that you can catch up on any past shows you've missed, the upcoming shows tab so you know what our schedule looks like and all of that good stuff. You can also continue to watch us on Facebook and YouTube at GBKM Network, where you can con continue to join in the conversation by liking, sharing, commenting, all of that good stuff. And as you know, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at GBKM Network as well, as well where you can receive updates on what's going on right here on GBKM. Now, we're well into the summer, it feels really good, you know, and we're thinking about going out, enjoying patio season a little bit more. Some of us have been cooped up for many, 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 many months, and now that we've been allowed to finally be outside, we're excited to show off our new outfits, we're excited to get out on the town, but what happens if you've been planning your outside outfits for months, and the establishment that you want to go to tells you, nope, sorry, not appropriate according to our terms and conditions. Yes, there has been an upcrop of dress codes now being updated from many different establishments, from stores to restaurants across the United States and other countries as well. Now, just because, you know, you've been at home for a while, maybe you've forgotten how to dress in public, you got used to the pajama lifestyle, you know, the comfort over the, you know, being presentable in public. And people want to make sure that we remember in society, you know, there's a, there's a certain dress code in society that we all adhere to, to some limits, you know, and that's usually in adherence to the laws of the land, um, to put it simply. And I think we all know the laws, that all your bits and bobs are covered while you are in public is the main, the main thing to take away from a lot of these laws and dress codes. But when we start looking at deeper dress codes um, around us, from schools to work, and how much our views on race and respectability plays into what dress codes are put emphasis on, what is considered appropriate and inappropriate wear, what is considered, you know, put together, tasteful, what is considered work attire and what isn't, depending on which cultures you're a part of. All these different things that come up into what, you know, we see as dress codes that we follow almost globally around the world. And now a lot of people are taking issue to some recent updates to these dress codes that, you know, require less bonnets and do-rags in public and um, less braids in school, no extensions, all of these things that when we think about it, you think of the stereotypes, right? And those stereotypes are not right and we're not justifying them by any means. But when you're thinking about the stereotypes of the groups of people that are associated to certain hairstyles, certain bonnets and do-rags, you start to wonder, hmm, is it that this is a dress code that you want us to adhere to or is it that you're trying to keep a certain demographic out of your establishment by using certain microaggressions, if you will. Now we're gonna dive into that right here on the Chat Up Show today. Our topic is racism and dress code, and we would love you to join into this conversation. So make sure that you are tuned in right now, either on our app or our website at www.gbcam.tv where you can comment and share your opinions and join us with this chat up of racism and dress codes and whether dress codes can, you know, be a little, be a little racist. Um, so let's, let's dive into this. Now dress codes we know generally, they have an air of, you know, 
sexism to them when it comes to schools specifically. You know, girls can't show their shoulders off. They have to wear um, shorts and skirts at a certain length. A lot of the time, it's usually girls that receive uh, harsher punishments when it comes to adhering to dress code code standards. And a lot of the times, those dress code standards, the, the goalposts move. You know, one day it's okay for a certain person to come in with, you know, less than three fingers of a shoulder strap, and the other, it's not okay for someone to come in with a four-finger shoulder strap. It's depending on who's in charge of, you know, putting up these rules and who's in charge of making sure that people are following such rules. Now, I'm not going to fully get into the whole sexism part of it, but it's important that we do remember that this is also a part of how society even governs how people dress, and especially women have dress, and especially how black women dress. And we're going to get into that a little bit later on in the show. But to kind of kick off our topic of discussion today, earlier this week, there was another eatery in Texas that went viral on social media for their new dress code. Um, as we remember, there was an eatery in Dallas, Texas, a while ago that had kind of an issue with people twerking in their es restaurant establishment and kicked those patrons out and came out and did a rant. We remember this, had a whole rant about how, as black people, we need to know how to conduct ourselves in public and there's a time and place for all this twerking. It is not in their restaurant. Well, there's a whole new Texan eatery that is letting um, you know their patrons know that you can't just show up however you want. So earlier this week, um, on Instagram, the Houston Food Truck and Patio uh, establishment Turkey Leg Hut posted new dress code policies. And in a caption, they wrote, please know that we are a family-friendly restaurant that serves all ages from uh, children to adults daily. And putting this dress code up adheres to that. So let's actually put up what the new policy is so we could take a look at what it is this new dress code is for the Turkey Leg Hut that they've posted this week that's actually gone viral and had a lot of people, you know, a little iffy about it. So the first bullet point here is no excessively revealing clothing, including distressed or ripped clothing that is revealing. So I'm sorry to those of you who absolutely loved ripped jeans. You cannot wear them if they're excessively ripped, meaning large gaping holes. As you know, that's like part of fashion nowadays. Large gaping holes in your clothing, too revealing, not allowed. Shorts must cover your entire bottom. So none of those Daisy Dukes booty shorts in this establishment. Okay, now the next bullet point is no obscene language or baggy clothing, no inappropriate graphics or language on clothing, no excessively baggy or sagging pants. Now, people saw the sagging pants and that's kind of when the light bulb went off and is like, oh, okay. Okay, we see where you're going with this. We see who it is exactly that you're targeting. This is a black owned establishment at the same as well. So you know right now, most of their patrons are probably black people in the area. So a lot of people were kind of feeling some type of way about how can you be a black owned establishment and you're trying to police us the way a lot of these non-black owned establishments are trying to police us in terms of how we dress and how we act. Now, moving on to the next attire, which also raised a few um, uh, eyebrows, sorry, the next bullet point, it says no house attire. And a lot of people were like, what does that even mean? If I'm coming to pick up food coming from home, I'm going to be in house attire. No, like it's going to be comfortable lounge clothes. But here they go into specifics saying this includes wave caps, do rags, house shoes, or shower caps. Now, the shower caps kind of threw everyone for a loop because it's like if you're really going to leave the house with a shower cap on and you don't at least throw a scarf on, sure, it's a little understandable that they would say don't show up in a shower cap. At least, like, you put yourself together a little bit, right? Then it also goes on to saying no exposed undergarments, including sports bras, bras, panties, or any garments resembling these items. No swimwear of any kind is allowed. So these are the terms and conditions that they have, you know, put up now um, on their Instagram. Um, as I mentioned before, they wrote in their caption that they are a family-friendly restaurant that serves all ages from children to adults daily. And putting this dress code in place was necessary to ensure that all parties, from our guests to our staff, are dressed appropriately when in our rest establishment. So this, these rules are not just for guests. Staff also have to adhere to these rules. Now, of course, you think, well, they're working there. There's a certain uniform. There's a certain protocol already in place. It makes sense for you to have, like, these somewhat strict dress codes for people that are working at the establishment. But doing that for patrons, paying customers, 
And then on top of that, it was revealed on, on Twitter by a Twitter user who detailed their experience with the turkey leg hut. Um, after paying the non-refundable uh, 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 deposit was when you received the terms and conditions regarding the, ho the dress code. So a lot of people were like, okay, so first you have all of these requirements as to what we're supposed to wear. And then on top of that, you don't let us know what it is until we've already paid the non-refundable deposit. So now we've already put our money into it. We can't really do anything and go against it because these are your terms and conditions and it is your establishment. So, so what do you guys think? Let's, let's get this conversation going. How do you feel about this response to wanting to keep the family friendly um, atmosphere alive in this establishment? while also keeping it fun, you know, supporting supporting uh, black businesses. We're all about that on the GBKM network, you know, and we're all about that in general, just supporting black businesses, keeping it fun, enjoying the food that they have, but also still trying to adhere to the requirements and dress codes that they've put out. Um, now, in the caption that they posted along with this image on Instagram, they went on to say that, unfortunately, due to the attire of um, some of our guests, we were forced to put this new policy in place as we remain committed to ensuring all guests are comfortable while, while visiting us. We are not a club, we are a family-friendly restaurant and will continue to maintain our standards as we welcome everyone to the Turkey Leg Hut. Now, of course, you're hearing this, and again, as I said, they want to keep up the um, family-friendly environment for their establishment. You know, they have every right to say that this is what we need to adhere to within um, our establishment. But it's the extra stipulation that they don't find out about this until after the refund. Now, this is only based off of um, one or two accounts of people relaying what they their experiences. There was a lot of positives to it that people were saying, you know what, if these are the requirements that you're going to put up, the food is so good that I don't even care. I will come in my Sunday's best. I will rock up in a three-piece suit and I will support you because the food is so good. And if it's just putting on a little extra clothing, that's not an issue for me. Then there's the other side where they're saying, why are you policing so much? And it seems like you're specifically targeting things that other establishments have targeted us for. And this is supposed to be a quote unquote safe space for black people to be able to express themselves, to feel comfortable, to feel like home. But they're telling you that no, don't feel like home. This is an establishment at the end of the day. So if you wanna come and enjoy the food, you wanna pay the non-refundable deposit, you wanna enjoy the turkey leg hut atmosphere, then do that. Then a lot of people came back and retorted, you know, Let's talk about the atmosphere. This type of um, dress code, some would expect, you know, from fine dining, like high, high, high class, maybe four or five star restaurant, you know, glassware, silverware available. But other users on social media, on Twitter, one person in fact tweeted, quote, a dress code for a hashtag turkey like hub, but you're serving food and beverages on plastic and aluminum. Which is kind of to say like, how can you to come up with these strict dress codes, but you know the establishment doesn't look like the kind of establishment that would ask for such requirements. Now we have our first our first com commenter joining us right now, Kenny, joining us on the chat up show. Yes, Welcome. Um, thank you for having me. I don't know if my mic is working. Hopefully, it's working. Hopefully. Yeah, I think so. Um, can you hear me? There you go. Can you hear me now? There yes. We go. Sorry. Um, thank you for having me. I mean, I'm just breaking into your show. Okay. First of all, um, did you say this establishment is owned by somebody of the color or a group of people of the color? Mm -hmm. So of the culture. Um, this is mis this 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 something is missing here, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, is it are they coming from a religious angle? Or are they coming from what are the basics? They're they're saying that they're coming from the angle of this is a family friendly establishment. So there are gonna be children around. So come dressed as if you will be around children. But a lot of people will wait, wear wait, wait, ripped a minute, jeans. wait a minute. Let's go back to what you have here. Mm -hmm. Um in, on this list here, how many things are not children friendly? Genuinely, maybe like the undergarments, I would understand. Other than that, I don't... And maybe inappropriate language on clothing. Durach. Um, so, 
And I, I, again, you can look at it from the angle that mm -hmm. you own your establishment is private owned. You can do what you want and so on. But this is a true, a true, in my opinion, and mm -hmm. one may may consider me very extreme. I may be, you you can call me extremist here. Mm -hmm. This is when you actually boycott. Mm -hmm. This is when you boycott, not when, for example, in the case of some artists that did some certain things, people don't want to play their music. Uh, they have a personal life and they have a musical cool life. But this one is actually imparting the business. Mm -hmm. This is when you book out because it's clearly that they are either confused or we're not getting the, 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 the complete gist. And, and you know, a lot of people are saying that. Like, why are we, like, why do we have to jump through hoops to come eat an establishment, which they, I, I don't want to throw shade at them, but, you know, it's often, it's often outdoors patio style. So people are like, the the requirements for how we dress doesn't seem to match the atmosphere that is presented by the establishment so what like what is it that you're are you hoping that people will come in their sunday best to dress to the nines like they're going to the races to come eat as someone said on plastic and aluminium or like will you understand if someone does show up with ripped jeans and then on top of that is these this dress code yeah it's written out but then what happens when, you know, a friend, family friend of the owner shows up in like something that's showing a little too much cleavage, um, maybe shorts are just a little too short and you're not going to say anything to them. But then there's also another guest that shows up, maybe maybe like ripped jeans on the day and you tell them that they can't enter your establishment. I think, I think they're in the wrong business, if you ask me. Mm. I will say that uh, this is the chances of them being in the wrong business is very high because in the industry that we are referring to right now, yeah. There is a lot, there's a lot that has to do with fashion. And mind you, fashion is evolving, mm -hmm. it's changing. Yep. And where does that leave your organization? Um, so I, I, I think there's a big problem somewhere when it comes to this establishment, if allegedly what we are reading is correct. Mm -hmm. This is straight from their Instagram, pulled straight from Turkey Like Hut Instagram. This is straight from the horse's mouth. This is what they've put out. And they've said this is how we'd want to conduct business and how we want people who are coming as guests and patrons and staff to respect yeah. that business. Um, some of most of the stuff they have on their list for me, um, you can perceive that it's targeted some certain group of people. Yeah. And what is confusing about this or conflicting is that um, you rightly said these people are also the same people who want to perceive they're targeting. So. What is what? Yeah. Now, I have a question here. Is this company uh, a public own? Is it a private own? It's a private establishment. People have shared in? Is it a uh, uh, something that has... Uh... It's one of those companies that, you know, blew up on Instagram, on social media, and then now, you know, they're getting lines down the block waiting for... So is it franchise? Not a franchise. I do not believe that they franchise Because yet. you know where I'm looking They're at? They're just in Houston. Because it may be that somebody has bought the company and is changing the mission statement from and behind the scene. And we're going to hear from, later from, on yeah, the Yeah, from behind the scene. That is very it, valid. It's possible that the, the owner is gone, new owner, and the mission statement is drifting. That is true. And who knows? You, we might be hearing the announcement anyway yeah, now. Yeah, so like this is why changed. I'm asking. There's, a lot, there's something yeah. funny happening. Yeah. You know, it's true because a lot of people are very confused. Like, why? Like, you know who your target audience is. It seems like these things are specifically targeting them. Why would you shoot your target audience in the foot like that? Like, making it that detailed and like so restrictive, like bag excessively baggy. Like, what do you consider excessively baggy? It's so subjective on this list. Now, if if you it's say not an if you list. say it, it, this is one of those restaurants that's that is that made it on Instagram or social media like that, the chances of people uh, having a very unique interest on such companies is high. And remember that um, who he who paid the piper detected the, the, the tune. So mm -hmm. it could be that somebody is detecting the tune because they're already paying the piper. We need to really look into this because it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then that brings us to dress codes in general. How much of them really do make sense? Um, when it comes to dressing, in my opinion, you get to also look at it as a traditional stuff, something traditional. Um, dressing is a thing that um, everybody is right and everybody can be wrong. I put it that way because um, 
I can dress somehow, and you may not like it depending on your or yeah. your background, yeah. where, what what you believe in, and where you're from. And the other person may like it. So it has to do with culture, location, geography, uh, yeah. the kind of people, and so on. But the question remains: what you ask, which of the dressings are appropriate? Yeah. And that's the thing, is that it's very subjective. Fashion is incredibly subjective. What you find as something that's appropriate for a workplace to someone else may be like, uh, why would you wear that to work? What someone may wear working at Google may not be the same thing as someone is wearing working, you know, d at, like Deloitte. Like, it's not the same environment, but they're still doing their job successfully. Yeah, so but, but, how but, come... But, but, but this discussion even came up the other day on uh, social media where... Mm -hmm. Uh, we have somebody in Nigeria had a problem with somebody advising him as to what to do, what not to do. What happened was that he goes, um, you know, uh, the, should, the pastor was preaching. It's like, oh, uh, you must put on this kind of dressing, that kind of dressing, mm -hmm. the other dressing. And somebody is saying, okay, what do you wear when you are going to an interview? And the interview, what if the inter you wear suit, he said. What if... The company is traditional. The company, so it's yeah, it's and that's that. Thank you for bringing that up because now when we're thinking of the traditional, like as what we're you know comparing what's appropriate and what's not appropriate dress for public spaces in general. We're not even just talking about like work space. If I want to come and I want to wear my full Iran Buban gili to work, how is that not appropriate? I am fully covered head to toe. Um, Iran Buba is not something, well, I mean, granted, there was like the boom that you start wearing it a little bit more regularly, but it's still fancy enough that it's party attire that you wear on special occasions. But, but I think the best solution here, this is just my opinion, is to know who you are going to meet, yeah. what environment, the work environment, mm -hmm. and what, uh, because whoever runs the the let's put it that way the mission statement of the environment of that company mm -hmm. can actually set the tone of way of dressing there are companies yep. that every friday they just wear casual mm -hmm. so you must be informed enough to know what kind of company are you going to work that's why sometimes when you are speaking to some people in hr will be like what's your cultural background mm -hmm. so that they can form an opinion to, and an understanding of where it is so it's important you must know who where and how yeah. when we, you are going to do this so no, that also you have a responsibility too. You can't just throw on what you want, even though we know freedom. They say freedom is freedom of speech is, is an expression. Is, is free, but yeah. we don't know if it's free after speaking. So that's <laughs> also another thing. You must be aware. For me, I see it as part of respect. Mm -hmm. It's just like coming to a company where we all work. GBKM, you want to be part of this company, and you have not even been to the website. So that's my that that that's why. So. When it comes to dressing, it can be racial. Depend where you are and how it's been, like in the case of this school. Oh, you know what? Let's Before we get into the school, let's even talk about uh, depending on where you are and how you are. How many, even just speaking of our home country, Nigeria, companies would allow someone to come in, even just Nigerian-owned? I'm not talking about like global companies that are coming, bringing, and starting up their company branch in Nigeria. I mean, started in Nigeria, owned by Nigerians. Would you say that it would be more acceptable to wear traditional attire? Or do you say that there's still that, uh, shout okay. out to Fela Kolo mentality of like, this is what's appropriate based on Western ideals? Okay, there's something, there's, there's, there's something I call colonial maternity. Colonial maternity is when you are stuck with your, your colonial master's way. Mm -hmm. In my own opinion, and this is strictly my yeah. own opinion, I just find that, that a lot of us are striving, working so hard to mimic mm -hmm. our colonial masters, even in our daily in our daily uh, doings, mm -hmm. our workplace, and so on and so forth. So yes, my answer to what you've just asked is that a lot of people will want, uh, I would say up to 70, 80 percent of these people will like you dress Caucasian because I think that's professional. Mm -hmm. But the word professional is relative. So, I, I, if you ask me my mm -hmm. personal opinion, um, I strongly believe that it's hard time we re-identify ourselves mm -hmm. and start doing things that uh, are acceptable culturally and geographically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we don't have to fit into whatever is considered the norm because of these colonial mentalities. 
And that's something I think that we, we tend to forget and shy away from when we're thinking about a lot of these dress codes. We're thinking, okay, yeah, we want people to be dressed appropriately for where they're going, i.e. school. But, 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 but sorry to interject. Mm -hmm. The word appropriate is where I have problem. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem is yeah. right now. Yeah. And that's where the racism is. Mm -hmm. Because who are you to tell me that what I'm wearing is not appropriate? Yeah. Like right now, say I'll digress a little bit. There's freedom in Canada. Mm -hmm. You can go wherever you want, mm -hmm. but you can't come to my bedroom, my house without my approval. Yeah. Yes, you still have a freedom. So if I, if if you are stepping into my house and I'm telling you you must take off your shoe, then okay, I can understand. Mm -hmm. But you cannot tell me that I'm walking. This is not right. This is right. You have no right to do that. So we must understand the fine line where it is. Most especially, for example, in my opinion. When it comes to schools, yeah. when it comes to public spaces, mm -hmm. when it comes to places, most especially that are that are governmental, I think we have to revisit it and understand what is proper and what is not proper. And who says the tone? Mm -hmm. Who says what's proper? And the thing proper? is, like they they think that by having these over overarching like dress codes and rules and regulations that that's enough but at the end of the day someone is going to have to enforce those rules and then their opinion of what is quote unquote as you said appropriate is then what is used to discipline and expel in some cases students who don't even need to be because if you really do look at the dress code it's so subjective that how can you really tell what is baggy clothing, what is too short, what is too Even revealing. when you're talking about baggy clothing, mm -hmm. everything have a boundary. Mm -hmm. Too much of everything is bad. I'm not trying to say that um, uh, there are not people abusing or not abusing. However, mm -hmm. if you are on a suit and tie and you tell me that's proper and it's the middle of summer and there's humidity as it is as it were yesterday mm -hmm. and I'm on my shorts coming traditionally you can die of sweat i don't i choose not to die of sweat so what i find i find a lot of our brothers choking dying yes. because they just want to uh, copy or they want somebody to validate that and mm -hmm. say this is appropriate mm -hmm. you know i think again appropriate for me should be tied directly to location cultural orientation and the, yeah. the core value and principle of whoever, whichever organization you're working. Yeah, even just speaking of the restaurant that had an issue with, you know, no swimwears. When you're at the beach, on a, on a beach boardwalk, for example, a location that's known to you know, people go in from establishment to beach, from establishment to beach, chances are they're going to be in a bikini or in something that resembles an undergarment. So that's an environment where if you bring a dress code like this, guaranteed people are going to look at you sideways because look at where you are look at the space that you're in look at what people wear normally and then you're expected to adhere to these so 100 percent, it is based on the type of public space we know that there are parameters within what is technically appropriate yes we know what's appropriate at a beach we know what's appropriate at work i'm not going to go to work in a bikini no way no how no matter how comfortable I feel, no matter how empowered I feel, no matter how much I'm trying to prove that just because I can do this, I should know. Like, I know that there's a time and a place for certain things. But then when we start getting into the areas like a school in Georgia, for example, who felt that it was inappropriate for elementary school students to get a shape up, um, to get designs in their hair, to have braids with accessories like mine in their hair, was considered inappropriate hairstyles. The appropriate hairstyles are on the left of the boys right there with, you know, the just regular shape up. There's no designs. There's no texture to it. It's it's a, what is this, Kenny? Like a number two fade? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it looks like that. But, you know, what is happening here, this is um, double standard. Yeah. This is, um, for me, I don't want to sound like I'm sucking and blowing at the same time, but uh, I would say this that, I almost want to believe that this didn't happen. <laughs> I, I to be honest, I almost want to believe that this did did not happen because we know extreme when some stuff are extreme. Mm -hmm. This has no it's not even quarterly close mm -hmm. to extreme. As a matter of fact, who says your hairstyle dictate who you are? Since since when your hairstyle uh, become the yastic as who you are? So I, I I think this is um, this is barbaric, this is uh, abuse, this is an insult on whichever race they're targeting. I mean, um, I think it's clear which race they're targeting. They only have pictures of black children 
up here showing hairstyles that you know predominantly folks with afro textured hair but would you, have. you know the impact of this on children on children yeah. self esteem never there's what i call never make it syndrome mm-hmm. the impact of this can go as far as intergenerational and now why are we allowing this? Why should we allow kids that are innocent, elementary school, you said, to be uh, 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 injected with such a, a, a high level of negativity that can take them forever to, to yeah. heal themselves off? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like this just says, like, the way that your hair is, as beautiful as your crown is, it's not good enough for this space. That's that's the message but, that you're but, putting but, out but there. But this is even more than this. Mm-hmm. You know why? Right now, as we speak, there I don't want to mention any brand. Mm-hmm. You hardly see any some men or some women that have real stuff on their body, from their nails to their eyes to their nose to their ears. They are all imported from somebody else's body. Not imported. N- well. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I'm trying to be careful with I, yeah, words. Yeah. They're all they're all aliens to their natural body. They're mm-hmm. aliens to their natural body. And I, I believe on this show, someone had a show the other day and mm-hmm. was talking about if you are not light skinned, they don't give you opportunity in the media and so on and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So these are some of the impartation whereby we start feeling that we need. A, like I asked a lady the other day, oh, I'm just making up. I'm running late. I'm making up. I'm like, you're making up to who? You know when you make it up. It means you were down. down you are inferior. Ooh. You are making it up to somebody. Ooh. That's what you're doing. I'm, like if I say I'll make it up to you. Mm-hmm. I'm stepping it up to you. Mm-hmm. So you're making up. Finish the statement. You are making it up to who? But making up for myself. Oh, what about yourself? Your real self, organically, traditionally, naturally. Yeah. That's not sufficient? I mean, I'm fine with my natural. So, but what I'm saying is that... Mm-hmm. By the time you are making, I'm digressing a little bit, yeah. it, it, it will make sense. By the time you are making up, mm-hmm. the under two base here is that you are not satisfied for with, with, with where you are. Mm-hmm. So you have to make it up. Mm. Now, how are you not satisfied with where you are? This is the genesis, some of the genesis. Yeah. Because you were told as a child that... A, you so now, you I bring enough. Mary Z, I don't want to mention any name. Then I start doing foundation, <laughs> doing detail, and doing riffing on my face. Yeah. Whereas, let's wind back. Since we want to agree that this is mainly targeted at dark skinned people, whereas the dark skinned people have the right to test, the, the, this test here that we have, mm-hmm. the melanin, mm-hmm. the hair, mm-hmm. the eyes, mm-hmm. it cannot be duplicated. So. The problem is bigger than what we think. Yeah. And thank God for a show like yours that is able to bring such topic out and we can talk about it. Let's take a deep breath from our men, our women. You know, I see my friend the other day went to fist fingernail. I don't know what you guys call it. Put, put fingers, nails on. Put nails on. A guy put nails on. So I felt like, guy, you're going to a stream a little bit. You know what I mean? And, you know, by those days, you, I don't know how to put this. I may sound too old. Or to you know what? It's not even those days because if it were in schools these days, would probably be sent home for inappropriate nails, nail polish. People are being sent home for. And like the thing is, like that we're not taking in is once you're disproportionately targeting black students, as we see in this image, who is losing out at the end? It's not the educators. It's the student that doesn't get to be in class that day because they were told that their hair was too inappropriate for them to continue in school that their hair was too distracting, that they're being, they're being. Now this, you know what, we're actually gonna go on a really quick break because we've kind of run out of time a little bit here. When we come back, we're gonna get into just the impact it has, especially on little black girls and how their bodies are being policed from such a young age and it stays with them for, forever unless you know the cycle is stopped. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Do you want to be your own boss and make income or extra income with flexible schedule? Welcome to Keenan Courier. Keenan Courier works as a marketplace platform connecting customers who need something delivered with drivers that are willing to serve them. Courier with any vehicle, better trip allocation, and cash out your earnings whenever you want. Download our driver apps today to sign up. My name is Carol, and I'm currently a project coordinator. I took the project management course. 
I learned a number of things, one of which was interview skills. I learned about the Agile framework and how that's very different from the waterfall model of project management. At Top Run Consulting, the key unique area that we try to focus on is not to just impart certification knowledge, but the application of real world tools. Back in June 2017, I did the business analysis course at Top Run. I learned the basic and advanced skills and tools to be successful in business analysis fields. Hello and welcome back to The Chat Up Show. I'm your host, Elizabeth Oloidi, and today we're discussing racism and dress codes and just the impact they may have on children, especially with the dress codes in school. Before we went on the break, we were discussing the image of a Georgia elementary school that showed images of what is considered appropriate and inappropriate hairstyles in schools. And as we can see, a lot of the children in these, the pictured in these images are black children. And we're, we were just talking about how this can impact a child's self-esteem. And before we went on the break, we started talking a little bit more about dress codes and how they play into sexism as well. Now, when we're speaking of dress codes and dress code violation in schools, for example, a lot of the time the students are pulled out of class. They are told that what they're wearing is distracting. They're told that they look distracting, whatever it is that it's inappropriate. And it's either they're sent to the office to find something appropriate to wear, or if they can't, they're sent home for the day. And if you have more of these dress code violations, it could result in suspension or expulsion. Now, when we think down to it, we're thinking about what kids are wearing to school. Granted, yes, there needs to be some kind of limit. Some kids will want to wear what, like whatever costume that they had on for Halloween the day before that you may be like, okay, that is a little distracting, especially for the younger children, because, you know, costumes look cool. Kids want to play with them, sure. But then once we start getting to the age of puberty and you start talking about how girls' bodies or boys' bodies are distracting and they are showing off too much, in a time where children are already insecure, they're feeling uncomfortable, these teachers are acting like they have amnesia and they don't remember what it was like when they were going through the exact same thing. And then on top of that, these undertones of microaggressions of racism where you're telling little black girls that you look too grown, that hair is too grown for you. Why is her hair too grown for you? You're the adult in this situation. Does the hair look beautiful? Is it neat? Is it kept out of her face so that, you know, she's not dealing with sh pushing it out of their face? Does it show anything obscene? I highly doubt it, it's hair. Or telling them that, you know, what you're wearing is just so inappropriate, we're gonna have to send you home from school today because we can't have you in the halls for whatever reason. These little messages that we're sending to kids, to us, we think that we're preparing them for society to, you know, present yourselves professionally, uh, confidently. It's doing the opposite. Now you're having people who are insecure in themselves, who feel that they can't express themselves if they want to. Now we're having delayed um, um, uh, displays of expression where people aren't figuring out who they are until their 20s and their 30s and their 40s because it was suppressed as a child. Now we have people who want to relive their childhood days because we had adults telling them that, no, sit down, don't wear this, don't do that, go home, don't stay for school because you look a certain way, you look inappropriate because you don't adhere to what I believe is appropriate. You don't adhere to whatever arbitrary dress codes that we have. This is an issue across the board, but when we start looking at certain statistics when it comes to dress codes especially, um, a, a report came out that almost 70% of schools' dress codes in D.C., in America, for example, prevent students from wearing cultural items like head wraps and scarves unless they are for religious purposes. So let's look at this one example. So you're telling me that my braids are inappropriate. Okay, the next way I find a way around it is to maybe wear maybe a, a bonnet looking do-rag to school so that my hair is covered and still protected the way that it needs to be as a woman with natural hair. And now you're saying that that's inappropriate to wear because it's not for religious reasons. Not even a do-rag or a bonnet. Maybe that's a little too, too hip for a lot of people to understand. Just head wraps in general. Culturally speaking, they've been around for a very long time. Historically speaking, let's dive into it. Historically speaking, black women were forced to wear head wraps and head scarves to show that they were enslaved in America or in the antebellum South, which is the pre-Civil War South, the pre-war South, black women were required to wear headscarves and head wraps to show that they were enslaved. Now, 
that, you know, they've taken that reason and black women have turned head wraps and head scarves into something beautiful and going back to the Pan-African roots of showing how beautiful head wraps can be. They are great accessories, especially on days that you don't want to deal with your hair. Great substitutes for having to deal with natural hair or having natural hair exposed to the harsh elements of the sun or the cold, what have you. Alternatives now, we found different ways to style our head wraps that make us feel empowered, make us feel beautiful. A little girl sees this on TV, for example, sees a, a, a broadcaster wearing a beautiful head wrap, says, I want to go to school looking like her because I was empowered by her. And now you have school administration saying, that's inappropriate, take it off. Now you're telling that little black girl that the person that empowered her is wrong because you feel that a head wrap is inappropriate. What message do you think a head wrap is sending? How is it distracting? Head wraps, turbans, this isn't even just black, this is just cultural that isn't Western culture completely. Anything that isn't Westernized, that isn't understood when we think about, you know, in terms of cultural attire or what is appropriate in quote unquote public spaces. If it's not normal or seen as normal in the West, it's inappropriate, it's not good, you it's know, not right. I, I'm gonna quickly just mm -hmm. jump in this way now. Um, this topic can go very, very deep. Mm -hmm. When you talk about head wrap, I see where you're coming from, and I totally agree with you. Yeah. But also, we have a role in this. I'll tell you why. Mm. A lot of us are not in the decision-making positions. Uh, some of us, because of that head style we talked from about from the yeah. beginning, we have that uh, 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 low esteem that we think we are not good enough in any position, so we don't even bother compete. Mm. So you end up People writing policies, making policies, mm -hmm. enforcing those policies, and making decisions, you end up having people that don't look like you in those tables. Mm -hmm. And even if they are, have a good heart, they cannot say our story yeah. because they don't know our story. They are going to make their decisions based on what they think they know. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to give them credit. I'm trying to say that we have a role to play also to this. First rule, some of the roles that we need to play is what you are doing. I'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. And stop making comedy out of it. And that's one thing I had problem with. Until the death of Mr. Lloyd, Floyd. In America, people keep using what's happening in the black community as comedy. As comedy and making money from it. Yeah. You are neutralizing it. Normalizing it. Therefore, the impact is minimal when it comes to reality. Or taking actions, mm -hmm. we must take some level of responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that this is changing. Mm -hmm. And that's true. And to the people, because a lot of people will come back and say, "What is the big deal? It's just a head wrap. It's just a do rag. It's just a bottom. Why do you have to wear it in public spaces?" But what's so wrong with it being in these public? If I want to go to the grocery store with a bonnet on, if I want to be in the airport with a bonnet on. Who is that hurting and harming in any way, shape, or form? I think it's how we respond to certain garments. Let's really look at that. Why do we have such strong feelings towards these things? Is it what they represent? Because when we see a do-rag, a lot of people just think hip-hop, early 2000s hip-hop, blackness. Blackness, wrong. You can't show too much blackness in public. That is the message that a lot of people are getting from these like restrictions but, but, a lot but, of the time. But, also goes goes a little bit also deeper than that in the sense that I like to take it a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of organizations, media outlets, spend so much money to promote some negativities in the market. When it comes to Durag, there were times, like you said, 2000, mm -hmm. there were times that a lot of money was spent to make it look like Durag is that thing. Yeah. You know, so we must be careful uh, of our agenda. Uh, we must understand that not everything that looks good uh, is good. Sometimes there are some money flowed into our community in the name of helping us. But the agenda may be different. Hmm. So by the time they bring it to the market, they turn the agenda and make it look bad. And nobody will accept it. But they make it look like you're accepting, you're accepting. I'll take for example, look at our black girls. Since 2000 to date, every movie you see them, every music video you see them, you feel like you want to, you want to, like, this is my sister. They are half naked. They're just, they're treated in a way, in my opinion. This is my opinion. They're treated in a way whereby you'll be like, this is supposed to be my sister. This is my mother. This is my auntie. You know, they sing about them, like, the, 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 the thing, like, in the way that, 
Well, well, it's selling because the record label owner wanted to sell. Mm -hmm. But who are the record label owners? So you see how it ends biting us at the end. Yeah. And it's a cycle. It ends up biting. So there's money injected in it to the record label. It's selling. It's appealing. But it's going to bite us at the end. Mm -hmm. So we must be very, 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 very careful of all this. Being being more careful about gatekeeping. Yes. Of, yes. But a lot more when it comes to the culture. And I, that's actually a conversation that's sprung up a lot recently, is that people feel that a lot of what is considered black culture has become pop culture. And it's been completely watered down and stripped away from its original roots to the point that now it's like you're demonizing the people that created the culture only you take away the turn, value, you, and, and then, and then you monetize it, it to, to suit to your taste. For you. Yes, but then when it's not like pr like serving you the way that you want it anymore, then you're back to demonizing it again. Do rags, clear example. I'm so glad we brought that up, especially with you, Kenny. Is that initially it was seen as you know that's a little ghetto, and then all of a sudden you had everybody wearing do rags, and then it was in movies everywhere where people were trying to be like you know that cool hip hop gangster vibe, so to speak. And you put a do-rag on, you throw on an oversized jersey, and you're good to go. You look like Nelly and all of the rappers, and you're cool. That was the vibe, is that it's cool to wear these. Now, about a decade later, we're back to the point where it's not so cool anymore. Why are we wearing this now? It's a cycle. It is a cycle. And it also does come from gatekeeping the culture, because when we were all wearing do-rags and making it cool, that's when people wanted to, you know, partake in it. And then when that kind of faded out a little bit and we lost that hip-hop you know, pop culture went away for some time. Do rags also were demonized, and now that maybe it's coming back, yeah, but, but we're going to slowly see that cycle happen so, again. So I'm glad that you're saying this. The question now is this: When it was on the movies and everywhere, who made them and who sold them? I mean, a lot of the time you find them in the beauty supply store. But who made history. them? Who made them? Who are the brand owner? That's true. Who have the patent? I'm really trying to think of a black owned like who own it? it? Who made it? Who created Testio? Who I did the know. design? I don't know. I don't know if they actually are. And that, but then they will slap an image of like a black person on the on the packaging. Because if you want to catch a monkey, you behave like a monkey. Not a monkey though. Well, I'm sorry that I'm using the word monkey. I don't know. That's that's what some no, people will quote. True. We we gotta call this pay this pay. Yeah. We're talking about racism here. Yep. And any black man that is not real will not say that is real. You have to say that is real. You have to be upset about it. Yeah. And uh, you don't have to be yelling when you're upset. I'm not yelling, but I'm using the right word. If you want to behave like a monkey, look at the con the big company the other day mm -hmm. that that created a child, a little child, two years ago. And write a black monkey on it. You forgot? It was trending. Uh, yeah, there was a clothing company. I'm not going to mention the yeah, name. Yeah, I don't want to mention the um, name. And it was King of the Jungle. Yeah. And it was a black child who was modeling this sweater. And they didn't really... They, it took them a, a little bit to, you know, catch up on why that was a little... And we all had to fight, write yeah. emails, tweet, for the body, boycott. But even those boycotts, that's another thing. Is that, like, we see how much black culture drives culture. But then when it's time for us to use that power, it feels like then it lands on deaf ears. So what, you, where, what is... It doesn't land on deaf ear, my dear. There are different levels of decision making. Yeah. There are policy. We are not sitting down the way policies are made. Mm -hmm. We don't have economical power. We just consume. We are a consumer uh, a co a community. So we really don't have sales because if, if, you're, if you are consuming my product... Mm -hmm. And you want to boycott me? And I have the economical power. I'll rebrand. Mm -hmm. I'll pay somebody to study you and know what you like like next, and then I'll bring up that brand. You flock for it. It's just about repackaging and rebranding. That's what it is. Yeah. That's why you said Durak may come again. It's still gonna be the same people that are gonna study you. They are gonna know what you want. How you, when you go to bed. Nowadays, your TV. I said the other. Even look yeah. watch you. Your TV has the camera that watch you. Yeah. So even with bonnets, I'm seeing a lot more people like being more open to the different styles of bonnets that are around. Now we're having the Ankara, Ankara style of bonnets. Now people are getting interested in like the silk line bonnets. And this is like folks of all, not just Afro textured hair. Now it's becoming almost trendy to want to take care of your hair by wrapping it in a bonnet. Of but some guess sort. what? But it's still not trendy enough for the people who originally... No. When you are, when you, when we are, you are talking about racism here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and dressing, dress code. Yep. When we have it mm -hmm. organically, it was not a good thing. Yep. When they're able to buy into the market and invest their money in it to make it look like it's appealing. Mm -hmm. And if that's not taken, imagine, remember the stories of our, our brothers, slave brothers. They, they, they invented a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. yet they don't have one patent. Somebody has owned it. Somebody has owned the patent. So it's still the same strategy, but repackaged. So, yeah. again, there's a lot angle to look at this. It's deep. It's very, very deep. Yeah. So you have to look at it, first of all, like I said, this you have to be sensitive of where, who owned the company, where you are going, what is going on there, what they stand for, because everybody has rights. However... You do not delude, don't delude yourself of the deeper, deeper, deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. The forces that drive it. Now, when a code, dress code that was not accepted, become accepted, ask yourself why and since when. Mm -hmm. Where is it going? What are they trying to steal or water down? Mm -hmm. It's like Ankara. Growing up, it was like, what are you wearing? And now all of a sudden, it's those are, those are the prints. So we get fooled. Yeah that oh now it's trending now it's trending get guess what is also trending that you are not noticing you are waiting for validation mm -hmm. you are waiting for somebody to validate you that's when it trends that it should be so i should be able to validate myself and make it trend mm -hmm. how do i do that economical power we get to uh, 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 economically empower ourselves it's enough to say we are united we can get united as much as possible if we are not economically empowering ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are disunited, whether you like it or not. We should have a second thought in the content we put out if those that put out content. I said an example. There is a popular uh, uh, brand name that a lot of home uh, music video use. They even use it in their song. They pop the bottle. They keep singing. They sing it. If you look at who owns it. Who owns it? You we go out in Toronto here, you see people popping bottles. Mm -hmm. They're not the pop, bottles. They're not popping pan wine. <laughs> and they're, to be fair, they're popping that brand. You know what? If we rebrand palm wine, I'm telling you. But we have to rebrand it. No one else can. You see what I'm saying? By the time they discover that rebranded yeah. now, then we're still gonna be and popping then it'll be in like now, popping in dollars a bottle. Yeah. But yeah, we we'll go we we'll take like we we'll go live yeah. when when the bottle arrives, that's when you go live on a live video mm -hmm. to show that you are popping that name. We need to understand mm -hmm. who we are, where we are coming from. We need to understand where we are going. We need to understand the gimmick. Yeah. And it's in that seeking the validation, I think, is where we get to situations like the turkey leg hut, where people are like, you have a target audience, and now you're trying to restrict that target audience, knowing that this is stuff that, you know, you've seen folks of that demographic wear. Is it that you're trying to seek a certain level of validation to think that to have an, a successful establishment, it has to look a certain way or have a guest to look Let a certain way? Let me even come in. I said something before. Yeah. I said maybe the owner changed. Let me throw more light on that. I just was going around the fence because mm -hmm. I didn't want to really go in depth. Once you are a business owner, if you are not very, very careful, your mission statement will be aborted. How does that happen? You get bought over. Mm -hmm. Once you get bought over, once you start owning for your nine percent share, mm -hmm. and the only other person only have fifty one one percent above, you have no grip on that company anymore. So most time we don't see this coming. We just go and go and go, and then sometimes we we we, we, we regret it. Mm -hmm. How can you own a company that costs sixty thousand dollars? Somebody's giving you sixty million dollars for it. You don't question all the reason. Mm -hmm. Or one million dollar for it. When your company worth less than hundred thousand, you're getting one million. Do you think the person is foolish? So we must be very versatile mm -hmm. in these dealings because um Yeah. I'll hand it over to you because yeah. I don't want to say too much. No, before I actually before we go, I, there is one other thing that I want to bring up. Um is the image of what was posted in a Columbus, Ohio medical office. Um, this is actually an OBGYN's office. So you know a lot of pregnant people are coming in fo foot swollen. Anyway, so they basically said that these are their new rules and regulations, if you will, um, of what you can wear to this particular doctor's office. And the sign reads, attire and grooming. Please refrain from wearing sleepwear items. Thank you for understanding. Subjective. 
Um, so the sleepwear items that they've listed includes no pajamas, no slippers, and no hair bonnets. It was as soon as they saw the no hair bonnets that folks on Instagram were like, what do you mean no bonnets? And then they were like, no slippers. And then what do you even consider pajamas these days? But it was the whole bonnet aspect of it because that just feels a little too specific. Um, you know, large demographic of people who are wearing bonnets in public spaces generally are black women. So we know that this is somewhat targeting the black women that visit this office in Ohio regarding their bonnets. Now, one user um, pointed out, wouldn't it be better to have someone who is in somewhat loose clothing for a gynecological exam? And how is a bonnet even going to get in the way of something that is literally below the waist? How is what is going on on top of my head going to make a, co a doctor not able to do their job for an OBGYN appointment? Which is fair. This is just another example of subjective dress codes policing certain things that make other people but, but. seem uncomfortable, uncomfortable, but then no further explanation as to what it is specifically that's making you uncomfortable. Granted, of course, you don't want people coming to a doctor's office completely sloppy, wearing, you know, clear pajamas like they just rolled out of bed. 100% you understand. But you also have to understand that it's a lot of pregnant women coming into this office. They're not thinking about your comfort levels. At this time, they're thinking about their comfort levels. That's what I was going to say. Is that it's not about you in this situation, doctor. Yes, granted, you're going to probably save their life and you're bringing a child into the world. Yes. But we're thinking of pregnant women, mothers-to-be, who are coming into doctor's appointments that honestly, frankly, they probably rather stay in bed for anyway. Now you're telling them that they can't be comfortable at said doctor's appointments, that they have to adhere to your new dress codes because certain staff feel uncomfortable. Is this extreme or is this within their right? Well, to me, uh, I, I, I was coming, a lot of people say I'm an extremist, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I would like to say the way it is. Uh, mm -hmm. This is senseless, it's useless. Whoever made this policy, uh, forgive me to say that I believe they are thinking from their foot. They actually have their brain under their foot and they are working on it, <laughs> in my opinion. Because I will not allow my wife to go to an environment where she's, she's not free. Mm -hmm. Most especially, I am not a woman. I have never been pregnant. Mm -hmm. But I have, I, have, I have been privileged to be around pregnant women. I know how hard it is for them to even walk from point A to point B. And uh, now their tummy is shoot out. They can't even sleep properly. They're trying to put on something that is flexible on them, just to slap something on and come. And uh, like you rightly point out, pointed out, they're not even looking at any other thing but how to just secure that baby and secure themselves. So, and here you go, you're slapping something. And now let, let's talk about the bonnet. Uh, again, uh, this is to this is just you see when you are making a soup, mm -hmm. you make the soup, you make the soup, you showcase the food. So, you have to put on evidence of what who you want to eat it. So that's why some people will say, oh, the, this woman's soup is mine. There's no pepper. There is pepper. Mm -hmm. There's too much pepper. When you have those spicy in it, who eats spices? Mm -hmm. You know in your mind who you are targeting, who eats spices. If you don't put, you don't buy a McDonald's and find Nigerian pepper in it. <laughs> I'm being honest here, and I've yeah. been African here now. Maybe if they put a McDonald's in Nigeria, maybe. Even I have eaten Niger McDonald's in Nigeria. There's no African pepper in it. So the point here is that mm -hmm. they throw that in just to let their comrade know that we are not targeting you. This is who we are targeting. Microaggressions. That's what I think it is. Yeah. And above it all, anybody can quote, this is my opinion. I do believe that whoever makes those decisions... Uh, they are working with their they are working with their f their mm -hmm. brain underneath their foot. Therefore they can't breathe. They don't yeah. they can't think properly. Yeah. You don't do that to people. Listen, when you go, I was there when my daughter was delivered. Mm -hmm. When you see what these women go through, regardless if they are black or white, and this is your job. You're supposed to understand mm -hmm. what they go through. And yet you turn around mm -hmm. and stab them in the back. Mm -hmm. That is betrayal. Even even just speaking about that whole, like, it's your job, you're supposed to understand what they go through. Even just the racial disparities in the medical field alone till this day is shocking to the point that there are people who are being trained as nurses being told that you will have to puncture a black person's skin a little tougher because the skin is thicker. 21st century stuff. 
So that's 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 a whole other conversation about like racism and its insidiousness and deep rootedness. And by the way, this issue isn't like this dress code racism issue isn't ju not just an American issue. Even here in Toronto, there were uh, people who were lobbying for a change in the Toronto District School Board when it came to dress codes and the violations and how it disproportionately affects marginalized, racialized groups, specifically predominantly black indigenous people of color, where a lot of the dress codes are to do with, um, you know, not wanting certain hairstyles, not wanting certain head wraps, not wanting certain gang affiliated clothing, which really is caps, hoodies, don't sag your pants. Granted, the whole pants sagging thing is really a subjective thing because there are across the board there are people who are like sagging pants should not be a thing but i don't believe that someone should be suspended or expelled from school because you think that they're sagging their pants because they're part of a gang do you know that for a fact are they put bringing their you know gang affiliations onto school property and showing it off is it hindering other students from learning you know what's sad about it to be honest if you want to mm -hmm. control and monitor stuff these people are they have enough they're, enough they intelligence can't. To control and monitor stuff it's not by you telling me not to sag i personally i can say this i'm not a fan of sagging mm -hmm. i have my beliefs and i have my rights to keep my yeah. beliefs to myself but you have enough and a better way of controlling this instead of telling me i'll try that i am i am inconsequential and saying go home i'm, I'm in relevant and then the guy that is telling me go home get paid for Regardless. having for having one less child to teach, mm -hmm. one less trouble, one less hassle, mm -hmm. he get paid or she get paid. Mm -hmm. I think the dynamic has to change. Yep. And it's in having, as you said, having these conversations is when we start thinking about it. Like really thinking deeply is a lot of these microaggressions, we're looking at just the iceberg of it, a bonnet. Is it really that much of an obscene thing to look at? that people feel this like reaction to it, that doctors are even banning it in their OBGYN offices. But no, it's something deeper. It's what they represent. It's what when we see a bonnet, what we think of. You see, I said something today. I said economical power. Yeah. Policy. Do you know that when they are banning some stuff, making policy, and you turn around, you need somebody having a turban there, mm -hmm. or you need somebody having a, mm -hmm. it changes things. Yeah. But when there's nobody in that room, people can do what they want. So, in my opinion, I'm going to get off your line now because I know uh, your time is spent. Time in my opinion, we should focus on ourselves, not only culturally, economically, educationally. When I mean educationally, please remember, education is not only acquired in the school. Mm -hmm. Cultural education. Geographical education. For a long time, a lot of people have been saying our story for us. We must be informed mm -hmm. to, uh, to say our story. Because if you are not informed, you are deformed. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on the show. And with that, that concludes our chat up sh for today. Thank you so much for joining us on the Chat Up Show today and, of course, joining in the conversation. As you know, on the Chat Up Show, we enjoy having these conversations that speak to our global communities at large and the issues that affect us all. And in having these chat ups is hopefully how we can see the changes that we want to see in this world. With that, make sure you keep in touch and keep updated with the GBKM network by listening and watching live 24-7 at www.gbkm.fm or www.gbkm.tv. You can also download our free app on iOS and Android devices, the GBKM app right now, free to download the same features on the website as well as on the app, and you get notified every time we go live. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at GBKM Network and continue to watch us live on YouTube and Facebook at GBKM Network. You can follow me, your host, on Instagram and Twitter at TIS underscore Liz underscore O. And with that, I will see you at the same time, same place next week. Chat with you then. Take care. The bad news is that everyone is a potential victim. But the good news is that everyone is a potential solution. Sensitize the masses to sanitize. Keep a social distance and quarantine. Stop! The coronavirus is sweeping over mankind. Everybody must be alert. It's a global pandemic we can never take for granted. It's a matter of life we can never take for granted. Discipline and personal hygiene.
hygiene and make sure you regularly wash your hands. Keep a distance from everyone. Report anything like a simple tomb. Serious fever is a simple tomb. Dry cough is a simple tomb. Walk away, Tamala is a simple tomb. Itchy eyes and flu is a simple tomb. I will move right there. We will move out of Siga. We will move out of Nalwada. to be your own boss and make income or extra income with flexible schedule? Welcome to Keenan Courier. Keenan Courier works as a marketplace platform connecting customers who need something delivered with drivers that are willing to serve them. Courier with any vehicle, better trip allocation, and cash out your earnings whenever you want. Download our driver apps today to sign up. and I'm currently a project coordinator. I took the project management course. I learned a number of things, one of which was interview skills. I learned about the agile framework and how that's very different from the waterfall model of 